Psalms 37. Again, reading, we'll read verse 23. The Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you tonight. Thank you for all the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God that hears and answers prayer. Thank you, Father, for, uh, Lord, when we couldn't even get an operator on the phone, yet we can call on the God of heaven. And, Lord, there's never a busy signal. And, God, you always entertain our, our prayers. And, God, you always take time to listen. And, God, you work in the shadows and stir. And, God, uh, you move things and arrange things. Uh, even foul-mouthed uh, co-workers are moved out of the way when one of your children cries unto the Lord because uh, their spirit was being vexed. Uh, and God, you reach down your mighty hand and you touch and you heal folks that have had surgery. And God, you move in great ways. Uh, and God, I'm glad you're our God tonight. And I'm glad that, Lord, we can call on you and find help in time of need. Uh, now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes. Uh, Lord, you'd take up your bold... Uh, Yet manifest yourself through the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, God, would you make the Bible become real to us? Uh, and God, I pray that you would burn within our hearts. Uh, we certainly pray for those that are working with the teens on the other side. You'd bless their efforts. Uh, those young people face uh, tremendous peer pressure in these days. Uh, God, I pray you'd undergird them with truth uh, and love uh, and mercy. Uh, God, I pray you'd put a a watch guard about them and protect them. Uh, then, Father, are these in the sanctuary? Uh, God, I pray you'd stir our hearts. Uh, we pray especially if there be somebody amongst us tonight uh, unsaved. They've never been to Calvary. Uh, God, I pray tonight would be the night uh, through the eye of faith they'd see you uh, suspended between heaven and earth paying their sin debt. Uh, God, I pray tonight would be the night... Uh, We'd see them birthed into the family of God. Uh, God, you know what we stand in need of. Uh, I pray you'd walk through here and help us. Uh, that one that's low, may you lift them up. Uh, that one that's struggling, may you help them along. Uh, that one that is hurting, I pray for a balm of Gilead. Uh, God, that one uh, uh, that is on the mountaintop, uh, I pray you'd throw another log on the fire of their soul. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, will not fail to bless and praise your holy name, uh, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. And amen. I just want to show you three things as an introduction from this verse. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the path that is mentioned. Uh, it says the steps of a good man. Uh, can I say there is a path that you can take... Uh, there is a way that leadeth to destruction, my dear friends. Uh, it looks like a promising way. Uh, I'm reminded of Lot. Uh, when Abraham told him to choose which way he wanted to go, uh, he looked off at the well-watered plains of Jordan, uh, and he said, boy, that looks like a good place to raise a family. Uh, he didn't realize all the wickedness uh, and the sin uh, that his family would be exposed to uh, and how his righteous soul would be vexed. Uh, and uh, a lot went, uh, went down to Sodom full, uh, but he was dragged out empty. Uh, my dear friends, you better be careful which path uh, uh, you take. There is a way which seen him as a right to a man. Uh, but friend, you better follow God's path. Uh, God's path uh, is a way that's straight. Uh, it's a holy path. Uh, and it's a path that leads to glory. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, when you're walking in the way God's called you to walk in, uh, you'll not only see glory on the other side, uh, but you'll get some glimpses of glory on this side. Uh, because the goodness of God uh, is revealed in the steps that we take for Him. Uh, we notice the path, the steps. Uh, I want you to notice, if you will, the plan. Look what it says. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uh, whether you realize this or not, God's got a plan for your life. God's got a plan for all of our lives. Uh, 
Uh, and my dear friends, God will put things in your way uh, that might prohibit you from going off the path. Uh, God may uh, orchestrate and put people in your life that will help get you to where you need to get. Uh, but God's got a plan. Uh, and God's plan uh, most of the time is revealed through the pages of His Word. Uh, uh, he's got uh, uh, something for you to do in your life. Uh, Brother Jim, there's people you win to God that I could never win to God. Uh, and there's people I can win that you could never win. Uh, uh, but God uh, has fitly framed us together uh, and put us in a place uh, uh, where His plan can be fulfilled in our lives. Uh, hey, it's the whole duty of man to worship and glorify God. Uh, but He's got a specific plan uh, uh, for your life. Uh, and what you need to do is know the will of God for your life. Uh, it's a blessing that you know that you know that you know that you're saved. Uh, but do you know the will of God for your life? Uh, are you walking in the steps He'd have you to walk in? Is your life sold out for His honor, for His glory? Uh, is He the Lord of your life? Uh, there's a lot of people know Him as Savior. Very few ever know Him as Lord. Uh, can I say, in talking about the plan God has for our life, uh, can I say uh, our plans uh, are fashioned by God? Just like you was formed in the womb of your mama, God has fashioned a plan for your life. Now the worst thing we can ever do, Miss Jackie, is say, well, I am no benefit to God, and I can't ever do anything for God, and I'm not smart enough, and I'm not talented enough, and I'm not good enough. And I... What you're doing is you're dishonoring God. God knows all your strengths. He knows all your weaknesses. Brother Jake, He knows the numbers on the hair of your head and even on your face. He knows them, huh? He knows every molecule that makes you up. Uh, he knows your down sitting, your uprising. Uh, he knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Uh, he knows all about you, friend. Uh, and He wants to use you for His glory. Who are you and I that God uh, uh, would ever want to use for His glory? Uh, but He does. Uh, so the best thing you can do uh, is say, by the grace of God, uh, I am what I am. Uh, and if God wants me to do anything for Him, what a privilege. Uh, what a joy. Uh, what a thrill. Uh, I'd be able to do anything for God. Uh, I mean God, uh, uh, who is rich in mercy, uh, looked down in pity and love, uh, and He bestowed His grace upon us through the blood uh, that was shed on Calvary. Uh, and all He asked from us... Uh, is to live for Him uh, and let everybody know uh, of the lively hope that we have uh, of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, can I say the plan's been fashioned by God? Can I say this? The plan's been furnished by God. Uh, when you like me, you don't sleep much. They've kind of changed it. But used to late at night, they had all infomercials on. It's amazing what people want to sell. You know, P.T. Barnum said there's a sucker born every minute, you know. Uh, and can I say, there's a lot of people stupid buying stuff off TV. For nineteen ninety five plus shipping, and this will change your life. You get it home, it's the biggest bunch of junk you ever bought, huh? I remember comic books. Anybody besides Tommy remember comic books? You remember in comic books in the back, they'd have classified. You could get, you could get uh, I'll never forget, you could get a solar-powered uh, clothes dryer. You know what it was? They sent you a nail on a string. You just hung your you hung them out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, huh? Well, they they went from comic books to infomercials. But it amazes me how these infomercials they got all these get rich quick schemes. All you got to do is do this. You know, I'm going to teach you how to buy and sell real estate with no money down. Uh, and you can flip it uh, uh, for nothing. Uh, and all of a sudden, you can take a $5,000 house and make uh, $500 million on every sale. I mean, it's easy. All you got to do is do it. I mean, everybody can do it. You can do it. All you got to do is send me $5,000, and I'll send you my package, all my wisdom. Huh? Only find out they're lying to you. Can I say... God has furnished everything you need for His path, for His plan for your life. You don't have to do anything. It's already been paid for. huh? All you got to do is say, Yes, Lord, and step into the plan God has for your life. huh? All you got to do is submit your will to His will. That's it. That's the step. Uh, 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 realize uh, 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 that God uh, wants your Isaac. Uh, 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 and, and, his, uh, and, and wanting your Isaac, what He really wants is you. And just give Him you. 
He's already furnished everything you need to enjoy the goodness of God. But can I say, this plan is not only fashioned by God, it's not only furnished by God, but it's up, for, up to you and I to finish the plan. God's fashioned it, He's furnished it, but the plan will never come to fruition if you and I don't get into the middle of the plan and finish it. Hmm? We've got to finish the plan. God's already got it all laid out. He's already furnished it, but He wants us to step in the middle of His plan and then be like Paul, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, I finished my course. Hmm? Nobody's going to finish their course for you. Hmm? Paul's greatest fear, he said, lest when I preach to others and I myself become a castaway. We've got to finish the task. Hey, I don't know if you know this, this thing's winding down. I don't know how much more time we've got left. We might have 20 years, I doubt it. Might have 10 years, I doubt it. Might only have 10 minutes. But I do know this thing, when Jesus comes, I want to finish well. I want to well done, thou good and faithful servant. Huh? We see that there is a path. We see there is a plan. But notice the product of this verse. He says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Can I say the product of this, this verse is delight? Can I say, Brother Rom said it this morning in Sunday school, that we have a hope that should make us glad. And we have a hope that should cause us to rejoice. How come so many of God's people look like the mother-in-law that moved in with them? We ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. I mean, all God did was wash away our sin. Uh, all He did is go to prepare a place for us. Uh, all He did uh, 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 was give us all of heaven. You do know that when Noah got off the ark, he owned it all. Uh, and friend, when the old ship of Zion pulls in the harbor uh, and we step off in the glory land, we own it all. Uh, we've been made joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Uh, I mean, God, uh, uh, we offered Him nothing but a tattered garment uh, uh, stained by sin, uh, and all He gave us was all of heaven. Uh, I mean, what is there to be depressed about, my dear friends? Notice the verse says, and He delighteth in His way. When you're in the path and the plan of God, you can't help but delight in God's way. But notice... That could also mean that when we're in the path and plan of God, He delights in our way because we're following His way. Hmm? With that thought in mind, I want to preach on the way of a successful Christian. We ought to all have a desire to be a successful Christian. We ought to be a, want to be a Christian that makes a difference. We ought to want to be a Christian that pleases God. We want to be a Christian that others can look at and say, there's a Christian. Uh, used to, uh, 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 folks would uh, uh, come up to you and say, you're a Christian, aren't you? Well, now everybody's a Christian. Uh, they say, if you believe in Muhammad, you're a Christian. I mean, George W. Bush said we all serve in the same God. Uh, uh, we just call him by different names. That's not so. Uh, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, His name's above every name. There's none other name given under heaven uh, whereby we must be saved than at His name. Uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, but folks uh, ought to see your life, uh, see the touch of God in your life, uh, and say that person really knows God. Uh, that ought to be our desire, to be a successful Christian, where there's a way to become a successful Christian. Can I help you something? It's not in no magic pill. See, we live in a day and age where everybody wants to wave a magic wand and just have it instantaneously. Uh, you want a home-cooked meal by running through McDonald's drive through You're not going to get it, friend. You're going to end up sick all night like me last night. Huh? Listen, I had a good home-cooked meal today. Thank God for a godly wife that loves to cook. Amen. What a blessing. Huh? But I'm, I'm telling you, we want everything. We want the benefits of everything that takes a long time but we want it instantaneously. And I say, becoming a successful Christian starts one step at a time. Hmm? The old proverb, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Well, my dear friends, the way of a successful Christian life is getting on the path of God, in the plan of God, and taking them steps. But let me give you what it takes to truly 
be a successful Christian? First of all, notice the dependence of a successful Christian. Look again in verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered, here it is, by the Lord. And if you're going to be successful, you've got to learn to depend on the Lord. Can I say something? God expects us to do what we can do, and then He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Uh, 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 there are things that are way too big for me. Uh, there are things that are way too hard for me. Uh, I've got good news. They're not too big for Him. Uh, they're not too hard for Him. His phone's in the side of the north. Uh, everything is beneath Him. Uh, uh, and I've got good news. Uh, he can handle it, friend. Uh, uh, but what He wants us to do uh, is to realize uh, when this thing's bigger than us, uh, when them foul-mouthed co-workers uh, are too much for us to handle, uh, I to call on Him uh, and uh, depend on Him. Uh, say, God, I can't handle this. Uh, but God, you can. Uh, and then watch Him work. Uh, and watch Him bless. Uh, watch Him uh, uh, move and change and do things. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, do you realize you couldn't get out of bed without the help of God. Uh, the very breath in your body comes from the hand of God. Uh, everything you're wearing, uh, what you drove in here on, uh, what little change you got in your pocket, uh, it all came from God. Uh, Freed, we live in the best country on the face of the earth because uh, God had mercy on us and let us be born here. Uh, I mean, God's been good. Uh, hey, He's blessed us, went to good church. Uh, we got the Word of God. Uh, hey, more times than not, He steps out of the, uh, the shadows and meets with us when we assemble together. Uh, hey, we must depend on Him. Uh, we're going to be successful. And we can be like Samson. And do it our way, and God will let you do it your way. But the end there is always a mess. Can I say any time, and I've been saved 47 years, any time I've stepped out to do it my way, it's always ended up in a mess. But it amazes me when it's been times it looked like a mess and I just depended on Him, He's able to take that mess and part Red Seas. He's able to take that mess and make sense of it. He's able to take those ways where there is no way and make a way because He's God. It's a good thing to depend on. Now I have been said when I kick out of this thing, I want you all to have a party when I check out and go to heaven because I, I promise you I'm going to be having the time of my life when I get to see the Savior. But I've always said when I check out, I told Miss Nett, call him favorite preachers, let them preach. Bring in some singers, let them sing. The only thing I'm requesting for my funeral is I want Elvis singing, I did it my way. Uh, uh, let the big E sing. I want the V alive from Aloha, Hawaii. I watched it live in 73. I want that version. Uh, but can I be honest? When I've done it my way, it's not good. Uh, it's a good day when it goes his way. Are you? If you're going to be successful, you've got to learn to depend on him. Uh, uh, friend, do you realize you really do not have any control in your destiny? You know, we're always told, well, you control your own destiny. You can't, even, you can't even brush your teeth without the hand of God. But when you depend on Him, things that you thought could never happen, they just happen. Say, so how's it happen? Can't explain it. Just God. Preacher, that don't make sense. But God. Preacher, explain it to me. But God. Huh? I was thinking when Miss Noreen testified that she knows, that she knows, that she knows. Uh, uh, can I say there are some things that God does and you can't explain it, but you just know it. Uh, used to frustrate me to no end. You all know my granddaddy's the greatest preacher ever heard. Miss Lynn's daddy. I'd ask him a question. I wanted a deep theological, spiritual answer to a question. And it usually the answer came one or two words. But that didn't give me what I wanted. I wanted a dissertation. I wanted the doctor uh, a, a thesis on how it all happened. He'd give me one or two words. Then I'd study on it, and I'd start trusting God and all that. And you know what I found out? It was usually just in one or two words. Hmm? See, we want to make things complicated. Depending on God simplifies everything. Let's let Him handle all the complications. Huh? One old preacher said this. 
Lot's uh, up worrying all night about something, praying all night and everything, and then he realized, he remembered that verse that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. He said, God, uh, since you're going to be up anyway, I'm just going to give this thing to you and go on to bed. Uh, uh, it's a good day in your life. Uh, uh, when you quit worrying about it, you get it and put it in the hand of God. Uh, I depend on God to handle it. Uh, uh, friend, you can go get rest. You'll find peace for your soul. Uh, and God can handle it, my dear friend. Larry Seals preached one time, and never forget, he said sometimes the most spiritual thing he ever does is take a nap. Be good for you, huh? Right. To be a successful Christian, the way of a successful Christian just starts with dependence on the Lord. Can I say this? A successful Christian, I want you to notice their determination. Look at verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Now let me read that again. That didn't sink in with some of you. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Can I say something? Friend, mark her down. Saved, washed in the blood, on your way to heaven, names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, uh, your citizenship's already there. Your conversation's already there, but you're going to mess up. We fail the grace of God every single day. We come short of God's glory every single day of our lives. Uh, 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 just coming to church, we have broken the law of God. You do realize that? All of us are wearing blended fabrics under the law. You couldn't do that. I mean, we, we come short of God's glory every single day. But I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, I'm robed in His righteousness. Uh, I'm glad I've been justified by faith, uh, washed in the blood. Uh, I'm glad I'm secure because I'm in His hand, and His hand's in the Father's hand. Uh, but to Brother Tommy, even when we fall, we're not utterly cast down because we're in His hand. He's upholding us by His hand. Huh? Our determination is this. Uh, uh, though I step in a mud puddle, I'm not leaving my foot in that. Uh, I'm going to get it out, get it cleaned up, get back on the path and go on for the Lord. Uh, uh, friend, even though you may blow it, uh, even though you may mess up, uh, even though you may make a mistake, uh, even though you may fail the grace of God, that is not what determines who you are. Uh, your character is determined by realizing uh, 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 I've got 1 John 1, 9. Uh, if I confess my sins, He's faithful and just to forgive me and clean me from all unrighteousness uh, and God will restore us uh, put us back on the path uh, uh, we keep keep taking them steps uh, uh, trying to finish this saying uh, hey I'm glad I'm glad my success is not determined in me uh, but in whom I have believed in uh, and like Paul I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him uh, against that day uh, hey what a blessing uh, uh, my story doesn't end with me being uh, 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 fallen and cast down uh, uh, my story's about his hand upholds me uh, I bless the name of the Lord uh, I'm determined I'm going to finish my course what a desire to go out in a blaze of glory mm. we ought to desire with everything within us even when I stumble I'm going to get back up and go on for the glory of God some of the greatest stories that have ever been written outside the Bible deal with underdogs. Deal with folks that overcame insurmountable odds. Of course, the Bible's full of those kind of stories. Just look at David and Goliath. But one of the, my favorite ones deals with Rudy, who played at Notre Dame. Well, he was, he was on the practice squad at Notre Dame for four years. Little bitty half run of a guy, didn't even look like a football player. And every day they abused that boy and beat him into submission over and over and over. But he just kept getting up, kept getting up. By the time he became a senior, the coach told him he was going to get in the game. While the coach uh, was gone, they brought in another coach, and he could care less about Rudy. Last game of the year. Rudy's played four years and never been in a game. Last game of the year. The crowd starts chanting his name. The players start chanting his name. They'd seen that boy face every kind of adversity you can face on a football field, and they could not break his spirit. He just kept getting back up. They put him in the game with about 20 seconds to go or something like that. And all he did was 
sacked a quarterback a couple times. I think he recovered a fumble or something. I mean, just he was in about three plays and made a big impact. He's the only player in Notre Dame football history that carried off the field. You know why? Because he kept getting back up. You know what determines your character? Not the fall, but whether or not you keep getting back up. Uh, whether or not you, you say, but, but Brother Doug, I blew it. But did you get up? Did you get it cleaned up? Get it in under the blood? Did you make up your mind you was going to go on? You was going to learn from it? Uh, you was never going to go back to it? Uh, and you was going to go on? Uh, and you was going to show people, uh, not I, but Christ that liveth in me? Uh, uh, it's all about Jesus. Uh, yeah, I might have blown it, uh, but he didn't. Uh, but he's a gracious enough God that even though I blow, blow it, uh, he still loves me and forgave me, and I'm going to go on and do something for him. Uh, determination the difference between winners and losers is winners just keep getting back up there's no statistic other than the 73 Dolphins where people were undefeated but if you go study that 73 Dolphin team they still gave up touchdowns they still gave up there's nobody with the perfect statistics other than Jesus Christ but what makes real true successful people whether it's wartime, whether it's sports time, whether it's daily life, is when they've been hit the hardest, they get back up. And friend, I've got good news. Because he's the one upholding us, you can get back up. Hmm? Not only notice their dependence and their determination, but a successful Christian, we've already mentioned, notice their delight in verse 25. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Hmm. Can I say, when you get to look at how good God is, you can't help but delight? Uh, I know gas is back up over $3 a gallon. But by the grace of God, guess what? We all had gas enough to get here. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've, if you've paid any attention, but at Kroger's, the price going up but the portions are getting smaller but you know what every time I go to the refrigerator there's something in there to eat hmm. uh, listen our success isn't determined on the economy our success is de determined on heaven's economy and God's not broke he owns the cattle on a thousand hills uh, and he'll take care of you and David said I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. You know what? The only Christians that are paupers are the Christians who are not in the plan following the path of God. Hmm? You want to know who Christians are that beg? Those that don't tithe, don't give, don't, don't do anything to help anybody else. They're selfish, they're stingy. Yeah, that's not our God. God gave the best that heaven had to offer and gave His Son for you and I. My dear friends, when you... Hey, Again, God's economy, he says a tithe or a tenth belongs to the Lord plus an offering. And when we learn by faith to just give that 10%, I know the natural man says, well, I can't make it on 100%. How can I make it on 90% or even less than that? Uh, uh, God says, just trust me. Uh, and I've learned, my dear friends, uh, when you do your part, uh, he gives pressed down, shaking, bubbling over, does men give in your bosom? Uh, I want to tell you something. I have no sad story to tell. Uh, God's been good to me. Everything I've got came from the hand of God. Uh, and when you put him first, uh, and you put his plan in the action, uh, my dear friend, he can't help but bless you. Huh? That's just him. Now, a lot of times, you might not know how he's going to do it, and you might not even know that he's doing it while he's doing it. But when you get to the other side and look back, you'll see his hand was there all the while. The uh, Bible does say, cast your bread under water, it'll come back to you. Next Sunday, Brother Mike will be here. I love Brother Mike. He and I have been friends for over 30 years. I remember the first time I, I heard him preach. I met him. My pastor used to have him come preach revivals. And, and uh, we actually met him before Annette and I got married. And then after we got married, he started coming preaching revivals. He's one of our favorite preachers. Back in those days when I sold better men's shoes, back when a floor shine shoe was a real floor shine shoe, it wasn't made in China. Hmm? Some of you get that. 
uh, when Johnson Murphy's were made down in, in Murfreesboro and they weren't made in China. But anyway, uh, we'd always, when a, when a preacher come through that God touch our heart, i just buy a pair of shoes. I want you to fast forward. I hadn't seen Brother Mike in years. And when I became pastor here, the Lord told me to have him in, in revival. First revival meeting we ever had, Brother Mike preached. Dedication to this building, Brother Mike preached. Uh, but I called Brother Mike up. I didn't even know how to get a hold of him. I called my pastor. My pastor said, well, I got a number. Hopefully this, this will work. And I called it, and they changed the error code. Anyway, I found it. and I called him. He answered the phone. I said, you may not remember me. I said, but I used to be with Brother Junior Pittman. You come through, bought your pair of shoes. Or I didn't say that. I said, I used to be with Brother Junior Pittman. I was a young preacher. Now I'm pastor. He said, I remember you. He said, you bought me a pair of shoes. I'm wearing them right now. Well, I didn't know it then. He's so tight, he's probably still got them. Because he won't spend a dollar on it. I mean, he was somewhere one time. I was preaching a meeting with him. He was preaching. And, and uh, he said, let's go over to the mall. I need a pair of shoes. I found him a good pair of shoes at a good price. I said, this is below cost, Brother Mike. You're not going to beat this. Let me think about it. He wasn't buying them. He's tight, tight. I think he wanted me to buy them. I bought him one pair. I wasn't buying him two, huh? I said that to say this. I don't know. We bought him some shoes. We bought Dwight Kaufman some shoes. Probably bought some other preacher's shoes. You don't know how many times people bought me shoes since then. See, when you cast your bread on the water, it comes back to you. Uh, God, don't forget those sacrifices that you do for him. Uh, there have been times that we didn't have and we'd give. And there's been times... We'd be on down the road later and somebody would get back to us. I'm telling you, you can't outdo God. But you know what you can do with God? You can delight in God. Uh, I don't give to get, but I will say this, you can't outgive him. And it's a delight just watch God move and how God works. and how. Bless. I don't know about you, I was thrilled what we was able to do for Brother Rom. I was thrilled what we... What, I, I, just when you help folks, man, that thrills me. You know who else it thrills? The Savior. We won't miss that money. God will give it back. He always does. Used to, when the church was just starting to grow and just starting to move a little, uh, the deacons would come to me. They'd want to do something for me. I always appreciate it, but I wouldn't let them do it. You ask Brother Randy. I said, no, nah, we don't need to do that right now. Brother Bob want to do something. No, nah, we don't need to do that. Brother Randy now has learned a secret. He said, Brother Doug, every time we do something for you, God blesses the church. Well, I can't argue with that. But I got one over on him. Now when he says, uh, this is what we want to do, and he pulls out that card on me, I said, I'll tell you what. You go talk to Miss Annette, and if she signs off on it, we'll do it. Well, he, he's scared to death of her. He won't even go talk to her. So it's, uh, hey! I'm trying to tell you, though. God's a good God. You can delight. I sit back sometimes and look at what he's done around here. I think, what a good God. Uh -uh. Can I say the way of a successful Christian? Notice their discipline. Now, this is a dirty word with Baptists. You've got to be disciplined. Oh, yeah. Look what verse 27 says. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. You notice the word if isn't in there at all. He commands us to depart from evil. You know why God blessed Job with twice as much in the end as he started out with? Because he loved God and eschewed evil. In other words, he had a hatred for evil. Depart evil. If you're saved tonight, God has made you a king and priest in Christ Jesus. He's made you a priest that you don't have to go through an earthly preacher to get to God. You can go directly to Him. And he's made you a king to rule and reign over your flesh. Quit saying the devil made you do it. Most of the time you choose to do it. The devil didn't have anything to do with it. Your rotten, stinking flesh wanted it and you did it. Now he's telling us to depart evil. If it looks like a duck, if it sounds like a duck, if it has web feet, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. My dear friends, if it looks evil, if it smells evil, it hints of evil, anything to do with evil, depart from it. The Bible says to abstain from all appearance of evil. Even if it looks bad, you don't need to be anywhere near it. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, 
there are there should be some things that never come out of your mouth any corrupt communication, anything that's foul, anything that uh, uh, would embarrass the Savior. If you couldn't say it in front of Jesus, you shouldn't say it because He's dwelling in you. Hmm? If you couldn't wear it in front of Jesus, you don't need to wear it because He's right there. Huh? Everything you do, everything you partake of, the Holy Ghost does too. Hmm? Things that, uh, 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 if you can't listen to it in church, then you don't need it because the Holy Ghost is there with you. Hmm? Anything that would dishonor God, you don't need to have anything to do with it. Depart from evil and do good. Just do good. And I say it's always right to do right. Do good. Find some way to be good to somebody. That's never a bad thing. Hmm? Do good. You know what would change America? If Christians just started being Christians and started doing good to people. Hmm? Just be good to people. Uh, you know what most Christians want? Most Christians want people to be good to them. Well, God's already been good to us. You want somebody to be good to you? Then you be good to them. Just start being good to people. You'll be amazed. The Bible said, whatsoever man sow, that shall you also reap. Hmm? If you sow bad things, you're going to reap bad things. But if you sow good things, you're going to reap good things. Just do good. Just find a way to be good to people. Hmm? There's people out there hurting. There's people out there confused. There's people out there that only a certain class of people matter. Now, not to Jesus. All lives matter to Him. He tasted death for every man. You know what? You know way, and you, you know the way to end racism in America? Be good to people. By the way, we're all mutts anyway. Uh, I'm part Scottish, part English, part Native American. I don't even know what I am. I'm a mutt. Huh? But if we just be good to people, we treat people like we want to be treated. You know what happened? All of a sudden, the narrative would die, which it's not as bad as they play up anyway. Anything the media is hounding on, it's not that bad or it's not that good. Mark her down. Hmm? So, my dear friends, just be good to people. Huh? Christ's been good to us. Depart evil, do good. And dwell forevermore. What's that mean? Well, we're going to dwell in heaven, but you can dwell in the goodness of God forevermore. You can dwell in the blessings of God forevermore. Hmm? I'm, li I'm having the time of my life. I'm the busiest I've ever been for Christ. Brother Ernie come in and said, Brother Doug, you've been preaching everywhere. I said, yeah, I don't even know where I'm at. But I'm happy, so leave me alone. Huh? Really, I am. Other than that, whatever I had to eat Friday, I'm in good shape. Uh, this and that's done give me the rules going to Brother Bobby. Eat good, drink lots of water. So, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm having the time of my life because I'm dwelling where God wants me to dwell. You've got to be disciplined, though. It's easy to not depart from evil. It's easy not to be good all the time especially when they cut you off in traffic and you want to horn cuss them. <laughs> Miss Annette, she can, see, she can see the red flowing up. She said, don't you do it, don't you do it. She knows I'm about ready to wear that horn out. Huh? That's why none of us have a halo. We haven't arrived. He's still working on us. But we need to work at being disciplined to depart evil and do good. Dwell the plan of God and then lastly you're going to really be a successful Christian the way is lined out right here in these verses I want you to notice a successful Christian's defense look at verse number 28 where the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints they are preserved forever but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off you know you don't have to defend yourself he's our security huh isn't that what that verse says? Uh, he, he's not going to forsake us, and He's preserved us forever. So you just, you just stay on the plan and, and, and walk the path that He's set for you. He'll handle the rest of it. You don't know how many times the sorry no good devil or one of his imps has had you in the bullseye wanting to take you out. And you're just walking the path God set before you. And the Lord just steps in. 
And he's got you in his sights, Miss Sharon. He's looking at you. And all of a sudden, he steps back and he looks at him, looks in that scope and says, Whoa. <laughs> and all you can see is the Lord. Huh? The Lord's our defense. He's our security. Huh? Uh, he's done a good job. How many times have you been down, going down the highway and just get, have a hankering to get off and get you a, a Pepsi Cola or get you a hot dog or an ice cream? We, we love Dairy Queen, and we know every Dairy Queen between here and Florida, okay? We, we plan our trips around Dairy Queen. Uh, hey, I, I, I don't always get the same thing there. I tried different blizzard. I had a butternut uh, blizzard the other night. Highly recommend, huh? But how many times you just get a hankering, pull off the highway, you get whatever you got, only to get back on the highway and find out there was a tragic accident just up the road. You might have been in that accident. What what caused you to have that hankering to get off the road, the Holy Spirit? He just directing your path. And friend, when we get to heaven, listen to me, he's given an angel charge over us. When you get to heaven, after you've bowed at the feet of Jesus for a long time, after you've hugged your loved ones are there, somewhere in, in glory, you're going to look up that guardian angel and you're going to be thankful for how much he was on guard watching over you. Hmm? There have been a lot of times you know, Satan wanted to wreck your life, but the Lord stepped in. Huh? Oh, anyway, I'm glad he's my defender. You know, I learned a long time ago, let God be true and every man a liar. There's some people who tell lies on you. There's some people that wants to mess with you and, and you know, run you down, try and, try and you know, tell all kinds of junk on you. You just keep staying on that plan and walking that path God set before you. God will handle all that. I've had some that used to talk about me like a dog. It's amazing. They're not even in the ministry anymore. Hmm? You say, are you happy with that? No. But I kind of wonder if they ever belonged to God in the first place. You know, God never called me to be Holy Ghost Junior and, and determine who's right with God and who ain't right with God and, and judge people. That All judgments has been committed under Christ, not me. I'm supposed to try and live for God and try and win souls and try and be a blessing to folks. Uh, I don't have time. I, I got a 24-hour day job taking care of this guy. I can't, I can't handle anybody else. Uh, so my dear friends, anybody that's always trying to tear somebody down, they certainly aren't of Christ. Because he tells us to edify, build people up not tear people down you know who takes to tear people down the thief coming up but for to steal kill and destroy sorry no good devil Jesus said I'm coming that you might have life and have it more abundantly so I wonder tonight are you a Christian say preacher I know I'm saved wonderful how successful are you being hmm? you see you can't answer that because we always like to err on the side of we're really doing good the one who answers that is Christ. When's the last time you took inventory of your life and said, Lord, are you pleased with my life? Lord, am I following the path you've laid out for me? Lord, am I fulfilling the plan you have ordered for my life? Or am I doing my own thing? Lord, am I looking out for number one instead of being submissive and doing your will? Friend, the only thing that's going to matter hundred years from now is what we did for Jesus Christ I'll never forget I was sitting in a revival meeting about 27 years ago now sitting there and the preacher was preaching his heart out and while he was preaching all I could hear was the Holy Spirit saying it's not what you're doing in that corporate world that's going to matter a hundred years from now all that's going to matter is what you do for me. Because in that revival meeting, God revealed to me that one day I'd pastor. And now 25 years later, we've been heading that pastor. Haven't always done what should be done the right way. Dude, I, I'm just now learning what it is to pastor. But there's never been anybody done it with more joy than I've done. More gumption. I love being a pastor. I love preaching the Word of God. Not the best, but I sure do enjoy it. Are you fulfilling the plan God has for your life? So, a preacher, I do this for God, and I do that for God. Wonderful. Are you in the will of God? Are you walking the path He has for you to walk? 
Can I say his path, a lot of times you can't see very far out there. Sometimes you can only see one step at a time. But his path, he knows when to remove all the stones. His path is an easy path. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. If it's a burden for you being a Christian, friend, you might be on the wrong path. Why not tonight get in these altars and ask God, God, am I pleasing you? Am I in the path and plan you'd have for my life? Maybe he's dealt with you about something in this message. Why don't you come get it made right? You ought to be delighting in your Christian walk. You ought to be just overjoyed the fact that you know him. And he knows you. When's the last time you was just proud to stand up and say, I'm a Christian, hallelujah, saved by the glorious Lord Jesus Christ? How successful is your life? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get your guitar and come pick something out. Some are coming while he gets his guitar. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I'm glad that your path and your plan doesn't always make sense, but it's always right. Father, sometimes the fear of not knowing causes us not to walk the steps you have laid out before us. So I pray that that measure of faith you give to every man, you'll grow people's faith and enlarge their heart for the things of God so they'll walk the path you've set before them. They'll abide in the plan or the will you have for their life. They'll learn to delight in the goodness of God. Lord, you're a good God. We bless your holy name. Lord, uh, in Psalm 34, you said, Taste and see that the Lord is good. God, you are a good God. Now help us, Lord, tonight, Lord, to please you. Lord, there are some here who no doubt their life has pleased you. There are some who maybe their life isn't as pleasing. I pray tonight in your long suffering you'd speak to their hearts. Lord, they'd start that path today that pleases God. Might be somebody here tonight not saved at all. God, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost. Lord, through cords of love, would draw them to an altar of repentance. God, help folks to do inventory. Let the Holy Spirit guide them to show whether or not they're living a successful life. If they are, Lord, bless them. God, help them to keep on keeping on. God, if not, Lord, I pray tonight they make up their mind to depart evil and do good and please the Lord. Have your way in this invitation now, Lord. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.